This is a fun one. Um, this is a sketch for the layout of a motorbike. Uh, it's a sort of standard uh, generic type of thing. You know, we've got the front end here. Um, we've got the fork tube that's a little bit offset from the steering axis. Uh, that's how bikes work, how they can be steered. Um, this thing here models the swing arm. This is the rear wheel, of course, which can pop up and down under the control of this suspension. This is where the shock would be, uh, the spring and damper. Uh, down here is a little, what they call dog bone, um, that connects sort of leverage of the bottom of the shock, which is this bit, um, back up to into the frame. Um, now, there's a couple of important things here. One of these is the, uh, the pivot of the swing arm and this is the center of the chain uh, of the sprocket uh, this thing is the chain and so therefore the distance um, you know the, the distance along here is actually going to be slightly uh, changeable as the suspension moves up and down uh, this is the frame these bits here are kind of like the rigid parts of the frame uh, yeah so that's the pivot position anyway that is also the CG uh, of the engine rider, um, which will become important later. Anyway, so this is a pretty parametric sketch. Um, I've got three main sketches, the, the main layout of it. Uh, I've got some parts of the rear suspension are slightly in a separate sketch, and then the chain is in the third sketch. Lots of variables. So all of these X's <laughs> at the top here um, are all variables. and um, some of them are being driven by um, configurations. So I have extensively configured this is four different um, uh, configuration variables. You can see here that the rear travel configuration variable controls the rear wheel travel value, which is this one. So on and so forth. You know, the fork travel, the swing arm position is actually a setting of either 0, 10 or minus 5. That is the offset in this distance here. And then the, um, the offset of the fork, which is the offset between this and this axis, is also a uh, configuration variable at the top. What that means is that I can very easily type in a value here and have the thing redraw, you know, with 100 millimeters uh, or 100 millimeters of fork travel. Now, interestingly, and those that have ridden motorbikes know about this, is that when you compress the forks to their maximum, maybe it's 120 millimeters, um, the wheelbase actually shortens quite a bit. Yeah, the thing, uh, you know, the thing pivots around here, where the the swing arm and main frame, main frame doesn't uh, actually bend, of course, but uh, relatively speaking, everything sort of compresses together. And that's a really interesting effect you get because the handling of the bike changes quite a lot when the wheelbase changes. Uh, and also the same in the back end. Um, if you compress the shock, um, going over a bump or doing something, uh, you can change the length of the chain um, and all sorts of things can happen. So it's important to know what is happening um, under the effect of these inputs. So for that, I created a bunch of measurements. Uh, I'm using a custom feature um, called measurements and variables. I think that that one is, uh, let's see, measurements and variables. That's this one here. You can search for it. It's a public thing. The, the advantage of this one uh, is, is interesting in that just like our measurement to variable that's native inside on shape, you can choose a distance or a, or a length or something to measure, whether it's a minimum distance or a max distance or a component of distance, and assign it to a variable. So I've named this one here, which is the wheelbase calculation. That's the distance between these two entities, the two that are highlighting. And I'm assigning it to this name, wheelbase calc. But I've also got this thing, this is unique to this custom feature, which allows me to create them sort of under a consolidated um, scope uh, with this hash M. And I'm going to use that to great effect in a minute. So just 
for the purposes of moving forward in this demo, um, believe me when I say these were this is the correct choice to make uh, for what I'm about to do. So I measured lots of things. I measured the wheelbase. I measured the trail calculation, which is you know the geometry of the front end. Uh, you know this distance essentially here to here. Um, the an anti squat is an interesting calculation uh, that is looking at how much the um, the bike is going to tend to want to squat or compress in the rear end uh, under certain situations. And that is a, uh, an important calculation for handling uh, as well under braking or all sorts of things. Um, and acceleration. So rate calculation as well, that's the angle here. And you'll see this one, all of these actually change. Um, if, I, if I go back to this front fork travel, if we look at rake angle, it's 20.7 degrees. If I change that to um, you know, compress the front forks, now I'm at a rake angle of 13 degrees. And a, and a shorter rate ang rake angle like this means steering becomes a little twitchy. Uh, so we need to watch that. <laughs> Uh, we need to watch that. So if I go both ends at the same time, you know, then the effective rake angle, this is now the horizontal line, um, is now back to 18 degrees. Um, right, so so on and so forth. I could play around with this all day and try and keep my eye on what's going on here, or I could do something a little smarter, and that is connect it to a Google Sheet. Now, last year, um, we have written an extension, a Google uh, Google app extension. Uh, you'll see that in uh, in here. This app extension allows Google Sheets to connect to a specific on shape document in Part Studio. That's the address that I give in here. And it's going to pull all of those measured variables, all of the ones that came from this M. Remember, I said this was coming from one group of measured variables through this custom feature. So our custom uh, Google app extension here will allow it to, um, to pull all of those variables in and give me the values of them. Now, one step beyond that, what I'm doing is I'm actually providing some inputs as well. So I'm saying, given a certain fork offset, and given a certain rear travel or fork, a fork travel as well, um, given that, then evaluate all of these outputs. And the way that we did it is we set it up as, as kind of like a, uh, a custom um, formula, a custom function inside Google Sheets to get M values or get, the, get all the M values um, based on this input and this input and this input and return them back to me. And now I do that just with a fill. I can just sort of, you know, fill it through all the way from zero to 130 millimeters of rear travel. And it's going to return me all this data, which I can then, you know, use all my favorite graphing techniques to graph what's happening to the rake angle. This is radians, of course. Uh, what's happening to the shock. Uh, it's going from nearly 300 millimeters uh, down to 230 millimeters here. Um, so that's looking at the, the effective stroke. Uh, the trail um, distance is, this is in meters, but the trail is changing as the rear wheel travel. So all of these are particularly interesting to suspension engineers uh, for the setup and evaluation of the geometry. And again, we're doing this as, uh, at a very conceptual stage because we're going to use this layout sketch to drive everything um, down. Uh, down the line from here. This is a typical sort of top-down design uh, where we drive these things from a layout sketch. Now just to see this in action one time, um, I can choose a different configuration. Maybe I'm going to choose a fork offset of 30 millimeters and as soon as I type in new value there it's going off and it is loading the on-shape model, uh, getting the results back and giving me the new values for all of these graphs. Um, I could choose a different swing arm position. Remember there's, there was a setting uh, in here which allows me to pivot the swing arm in a slightly different place. And I've got that set up uh, as an enum, enumerated list here. So if I go to the low setting, again, as soon as I change that, 
this is essentially changing the configuration uh, and we're in fact we're injecting this uh, request uh, through the REST API um, as a configuration then returning all of these values of the variables here. So that's, uh, that's pretty fancy, that's pretty cool, but there's an even better version of this that, um, that my intern from last year and this year uh, created, uh, which is a much more generic form of this, uh, and it will be, uh, it's available as a Google app extension. Uh, if you go to the add-on store, uh, and actually, let's try it. If you go to the add-on store and look for Onshape, if we search for that, There's something called variable connector uh, for Onshape. And um, that allows you to just install this as, in, uh, you know, as an extension here. And it, it has a little bit more GUI front end to it than, than what I've been using up here, which in fact was the prototype uh, test bed for that uh, app extension. So fancy stuff with uh, engineering and math and, and numbers and graphs uh, connected to your Onshape models. It's, uh, it's all good.